Ugh. This has got to be really scratched up. Here we go. If you're looking for a screen protector for your brand new iPhone 16 Pro Max that you won't be able to scratch even in the most extreme situations, you're definitely going to want this screen protector I have here. This screen protector is made from 99.99% pure synthetic sapphire and it's got a hardness of 9 on the Mohs scale. So I'm going to be going through the full installation. We're going to see how it fits, how it feels. And you're definitely going to want to stick around to the end of the video because I will be doing an extreme torture test to show you how scratch resistant this screen protector is versus your regular old tempered glass. Now I know you've seen a lot of tempered glass screen protectors out there say they have a 9H hardness, but 9H and 9 on the Mohs scale are two different things. And later on in the video, you'll see exactly what the difference is. And if you're interested in buying the screen protector, I will be putting links in the video description. And we're going to start off by doing a scratch test with things that you might find in your pocket or your purse, and then we're going to get a little extreme. So let's get started. I've been using Shell RS screen protectors now for the past five years, and I have yet to get a scratch on my screen. Not only does it protect your phone, but it also ups the resale value when you go to sell. So we get an installation guide. We also get a little pamphlet all about Sapphire, how it's made, and what you need to know about it. So we get one sapphire screen protector held in place with these metal screws, which is pretty cool. And on the back, I also get a tempered glass screen protector just to play around with. I don't know if this will be in the final product for retail, but this is what I got inside this box. So let's undo our screws here. Pretty interesting presentation. So here are our two screen protectors. We'll test this in just a bit, but first we're going to install the Sapphire screen protector. So it looks like we get one Sapphire screen protector and some dust stickers. So here is the screen protector. As you can see, it is a full coverage screen protector and it does have a slim black border around the sides. And then here's our tempered glass screen protector we get. And it pretty much looks like the Sapphire screen protector. It's got a thin black border on the sides and it's also a full coverage screen protector. And here as you can see the two screen protectors side by side. So the very first thing you need to do is to thoroughly clean off your screen with an alcohol wipe or something equivalent. Then dry off your screen. Then take your dust sticker that they gave you. We're going to remove one of the sides just like this. Then place this over the top of your screen and then just kind of push out the other side just like that. Then take your installation guide. We need to make sure where it says top over here is going towards the camera on your phone. So we'll move our dust sticker. Then place the whole guide over the top of the phone just like this. Then take your screen protector. It doesn't matter which way you put it because it's all the same. We're going to peel the backing off the screen protector. Make sure you don't touch the underside. Then place this whole thing into the guide. And then you can kind of run your finger across the top here and it should start to adhere to your screen. We do have some bubbles in there and it does look like I got a, a piece of hair as well. So I'll have to get that out. But once it's done, you can just take off the guide and I'll remove the hair from underneath the screen protector. So I was able to remove the hair and get out the bubbles by very carefully lifting up on the screen protector and using the dust sticker. But again, when, if you're going to lift up on the screen to remove any bubbles, you need to be very careful because you can crack the screen. But as you can see, it is a perfect installation. It is a full coverage screen protector as well. And we do have a very slight gap around the screen for case compatibility, which we will be testing out. Now, as far as touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints on the screen, but you can very easily just wipe those away with minimal effort. Looks really nice. The edges are also rounded off. 
Now because this is a full coverage screen protector, it does cover our camera and our face ID. So let's check to make sure that those still work perfectly. Face ID working fine. Let's take a look at our camera. And camera looks nice and clear. Don't see any issues there. Now as you can see, the screen is also crystal clear. Touch working beautifully. No issues there. So now let's take a look at the screen as if we were looking at it through polarized sunglasses. And as you can see, if you're looking directly at the screen, there is a bit of a rainbow effect. And depending how you turn the screen, the effect can get a little worse. Typically, you're not gonna be looking at your screen from off center, so this is pretty much what you can expect looking at the screen dead on. Now let's take a look at the screen to see if the black border on the side is actually covering any bit of the screen. So we'll go back to our camera here. And if we take a closer look, you can see that the black borders just cover at the edge of the screen ever so slightly. You can tell by the little L's in each one of the corners of the camera. If I tilt the, the phone off to the side, the top portions of the L's become visible. And the same thing with the bottoms. Now, even though the black border does just cut off the screen ever so slightly, I really don't see an issue because typically when you're looking at your screen, there's not going to be anything right up to the border anyway. Just like this web page here, you can see that the text, there's still a, a gap on the side of the screen where nothing's really getting cut off. And when you're on your home screen, again, nothing's getting even close to that border so you're really not going to have too much of an issue the only issue you might have is you know if maybe you're using a camera uh, to frame things but i still don't see a huge issue because you can again still use these uh, grids on the screen and then let's check out on the sides if there there's any light bleed and you can see an ever so slight bit just a small gap on the sides and on the other side here, yeah, ever ever so slight gap. Really not a big deal, If you're, especially if you're going to have a case on the phone, you're not going to be able to see the edge gap at all. Now, one thing that I've actually seen the black borders be good for is keeping down that rainbow effect that you get on screen protectors that are all totally clear without the black border. And you'll see that in some of my other videos where if you're looking at the very edges of the screen protector, you get like this green pinkish a uh, rainbow effect along the edges and it can be kind of annoying and you're not going to get that with the screen protectors that actually have the border on it so it's kind of a trade-off between getting a slight bit of the screen cut off or having that kind of annoying rainbow effect on the side of the screen protector so now let's test out our case compatibility we'll put it inside of this case i have here and if you're wondering this case is made by kadabe this is their sheath case and it looks like it fits the case perfectly. There's a slight gap on the bottom and top of the screen, but on the sides, it's just super slight, but I don't see lifting, no bubbles. It just fits this case perfectly. Now, the good thing about the screen protector coming right up to the edge of the case is that's less of a gap for dust and dirt to collect. So I would rather have my screen protector fit my case perfectly than have that gap. But because of that, it may not fit every case out there. You're just going to have to try it out with your particular case unless you're going to get the Kadabe sheath case. And then you know that it's going to fit perfectly. So everything's looking great for the screen protector so far. And before we move on to the drop and the extreme scratch test, let's try to scratch the screen with things you might have in your purse or your pocket or maybe around your home. So the first thing we have here is just a coin, which typically everybody might have in their pocket or their purse. So let's see if we can scratch the screen at all with this quarter. And we'll wipe off the screen just in case there's any residue. And let's take a look. And the screen looks pristine to me. I don't see any scratches, no damage whatsoever. So it passed the quarter test. 
So now let's move on to something else you might have in your pocket, which would be something like this, maybe like a house key or something like that. So we'll try to scratch the screen here. And we'll wipe it off. And we'll take a look. So I don't see any scratches from the key either. Still pristine. So it passed the key test. So now it's something a little more extreme that you might have around your home. Maybe something like this. You might have a razor blade or something like that in your home. You probably wouldn't have it in your pocket <laughs> or your purse, but hey, who knows? You might have it for protection or something like that. So give our screen a wipe. And we'll take a closer look. Once again, I don't see any scratches, no damage. So it also passed the razor blade test. All right, so something else you might have <laughs> laying around your house uh, would be this nail here. Again, probably wouldn't have this in your pocket or anything like that, but it could definitely be laying around your car, maybe in your purse. Again, we'll wipe off our screen. Take a closer look. And again, no scratches, no damage. So it passed the nail test. So now let's get a little more extreme here. Now for this test, you definitely wouldn't have this in your pocket or your purse, maybe laying around your work truck, but you definitely would not be testing this on your screen protector like I'm going to right now. That had to do something. Let's wipe it off. Take a look. Again, no scratches, no damage whatsoever. <laughs> it passed the drill test. That is amazing. So it passed all the normal scratch tests. Now let's move on to the most extreme. So now with this extreme scratch test, I'm gonna show you what the difference is between a tempered glass screen protector with a 9H hardness and the Sapphire screen protector with a Mohs 9 hardness. We're gonna be scratching up both of these screen protectors on this really rough concrete surface and we'll see which one survives, if any. Now I will show you really quick that the Sapphire screen protector I do have on this dummy iPhone has scratches on the screen of the dummy iPhone underneath the Sapphire screen protector, which you can kind of see right here. But the actual screen itself, as you can see from looking at it at this angle, is pristine and there are no scratches whatsoever. So just so you know that the scratches that you see on here already are on the actual dummy phone screen and not the Sapphire screen protector. So here we go with scratch test number one with the tempered glass screen protector that has 9H hardness. Here we go. Oh that sounds really bad. <laughs> Ugh. This has got to be really scratched up. Here we go. Oh man, look at that screen. That is scratched and cracked. And that's what you get with a tempered glass screen protector with 9H hardness. So now let's test out the Sapphire screen protector with a Mohs 9 hardness. Here we go. Eh. 
Now you can really hear all that noise with the aluminum dummy. All right, moment of truth. I'm almost afraid to look. Oh, so it does look like it does have some scratches on the screen. You can see all of those right there. But let's hope for the best and we'll wipe it off really quick and see if those... So it doesn't look like those were actual scratches, just dust from the concrete. So if we take a closer look, you can see that there are no scratches or cracks on the screen. Still in perfect condition. So again, if we take a look at the tempered glass from the side, you can see all the cracks and scratches, even from the, a slight angle. And then if we look at the sapphire screen protector, again, you can see that it's, it's pristine. No scratches or cracks. And there might have been a little dust from the microfiber cloth that I can easily wipe away with my finger. So now you can see that, that those were just from the microfiber itself. Now you tell me which screen protector do you rather have protecting your $1,000 phone? Would it be the tempered glass with 9H hardness or the sapphire screen protector with Mohs 9 hardness? So now we're gonna do a proper scratch test with actual Mohs picks. So you guys can see that this screen protector can withstand a Mohs hardness number nine pick, whereas regular tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. And just so you guys know, this is the screen protector that I just got done scratching outside on the concrete. So we're going to start off with a number two. I actually put a one, but <laughs> Mo's hardness starts at a number two, which is just a simple plastic pick. Then we'll move on to a number three. And then we'll move on to a number four. And then a five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then a number seven. And then finally a number eight. And then a number nine. And we'll give it a little wipe. And then if we take a closer look, you can see that we don't see any scratches even at the number nine. It's pristine all the way through. So the only thing that'll scratch this screen is pretty much a diamond. You can see there are no scratches anywhere on the screen. And that's the difference between a 9H hardness tempered glass screen protector, which will scratch at a number six, versus the sapphire screen protector, which can last past a number nine. And we'll actually get to see what regular tempered glass scratches at when I test out the regular tempered glass screen protector that Shell RS gives us inside this kit. So now that we know how scratch resistant this screen protector is, let's move on to the drop test to see how durable it is. Now before we start our drop test, I need to explain something to you. Even though the sapphire screen is very hard and it's hard to scratch, it doesn't mean that it's really hard to break. Typically, when things are very hard to scratch, they're a little bit more brittle, kind of like tungsten rings. They're very hard to scratch, they're very durable, but if you drop them on a hard surface, they could shatter. And this screen protector is no different from that. So we're going to be starting off our test by dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a starting height of 2 feet. If the screen protector doesn't crack, we'll move it up foot by foot until it eventually does. So here we go, 2 feet. Two feet. 
So like I explained to you before I did the drop test, the screen protector is very hard. It's very hard to scratch, but because of that, it makes it easier to damage if something happens to be dropped on it. Now that doesn't mean it's not gonna protect your phone screen because it will. It just means it's gonna take less to damage the screen protector if something happens to drop on it or if you drop your phone. I care more about scratch resistance because the screen of your phone is going to come in contact with a lot more things a lot more often that can actually scratch the screen versus you dropping your phone. So this screen protector was really easy to install as far as case friendliness. It may or may not be case friendly with most cases so you're just going to have to try it out with the case that you're using. It lasted up until a two foot drop and scratch resistance is some of the best that I have ever tested on my channel. So now let's test out Shell Arrest's tempered glass screen protector. So again, we need to clean off our screen, then we'll dry it off. Then take your installation guide, again, making sure that the top is going towards the camera on your phone. We'll just press this into place. Now with this screen protector, it only goes on one way because it has a little cutout for your speaker. So make sure that this little speaker cutout is going towards the camera on your phone, making sure that this little sticker is on the underside of the protector as well. We'll peel that off. We'll place this inside of our guide. And then just kind of swipe down from the top it should start to adhere from your phone. You can release the guide. As you can see, it's adhering to the phone screen. Kind of help it along. We do have a little bubble in the corner here, which I'll just use a squeegee to get out. So installation looks pretty good. I was able to get out those bubbles pretty easily. This is also a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover your camera and your sensors. It does have a slight gap all the way around the phone for case compatibility. The edges are also rounded off as far as touch. Feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And as far as fingerprints, it does pick up some smudges on the screen, which you can see there but you can very easily just wipe those away with minimal effort. Looking good so far. Now let's test out our Face ID. Face ID is working fine. You can see that the screen is crystal clear. Let's look at our camera. Screen looks nice and clear. Don't see any issues there. You can see touch working fine. Now let's take a look at the screen as if we were looking at it through polarized sunglasses. And as you can see, there's a slight rainbow effect. If you're looking at it dead on, and if you kind of twist the screen, it gets a little worse. Not too bad. It's kind of like a, a pastel color. You can still very easily see what's on the screen. Not too bad. Now let's see. Now let's see how well the screen is lined up because this does have a black border. And just like the Sapphire screen protector, you can see that the little white L's in each one of the corners are kind of cut off. And if I turn the phone, you can kind of see those L's underneath. Turn it the other way. It seems like the black borders on this screen cover a little bit more of the screen than the Sapphire screen does. But again, your home screen, you can see everything perfectly fine. And if you're looking at a web page, again, there's still a good gap on the edges of the screen. So you can still very easily see everything that you need to. Again, I don't know, you know what's going to come right up to the edge of your screen. Typically, the things you're going to be looking at are not going to do that. So you shouldn't have any issues. And then let's take a look at the gap on the side here. And you can see that there is a, again, a slight gap. On the other side here, again, slight gap. Again, if you're gonna be putting a case on your phone, you're not gonna ever see these gaps on the side. I'm just doing this in case anybody's interested to know. So now let's test out the case compatibility. Again, I'm using the Kadabe sheath case and it seems to fit perfectly. There's a slight gap on the top, 
on this right side, not so much on the left, and maybe just a little bit on the bottom here. But again, doesn't leave much gap or room for case compatibility with other cases. You're just gonna have to try it out with the case you're using. But if you're using the Kadabe sheath case, it should fit perfectly. So now let's see how durable the screen protector is with the drop and the scratch test. So again, we're gonna be dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a starting height of two feet. If the screen protector doesn't crack, we'll move it up foot by foot until it eventually does. So here we go at two feet. Two feet. So just like the Sapphire screen protector, this screen protector lasted up until a two foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. Now, unlike the Sapphire screen protector, this tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. So now if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So you can clearly see that tempered glass scratches a lot easier than the Sapphire does. So the tempered glass screen protector was really easy to install. Again, it may or may not be case friendly with most cases. It lasted up until a two foot drop and scratch resistance is not nearly as good as Sapphire as we could see. So if you want the absolute best screen protector that won't scratch in the most extreme situations, don't mess around with 9H hardness tempered glass. Get the Shella Russ Sapphire screen protector. Again, if you guys want to pick this up yourself, don't forget to use my discount code in the video description to save you a little bit of money. And if you guys enjoyed the video, it would really help out the channel if you gave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.